welcome to this week's episode of the Groomers Cut, presented by the Pet Pro Educators and the Whole Pet Grooming Academy. Tonight, I am joined by Katie and Chrissy this evening, Hello. and I think there is a lag somewhere, and we are trying to figure out if it's on my, I feel like it's on my end. Chrissy thinks it's on her end. Um, not sure what's going on, but we are here, so hopefully you guys out in viewer land are not getting our lag. Um, we are waiting. Jennifer will be joining us a little late this evening, and I believe Mindy's going to be popping in as well. So um, we are going to start and get going on this week's episode, which is talking combination coats in doodles. So does anyone want to take it away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Ashley. Chrissy's raising Hi, hands. <laughs> Chrissy's raising hands. Hi, Ashley. Yeah, I don't know if the lag is on my side, so I'm just going to raise my hand and wait to be called on. So I would say with starting with um, these doodle, <laughs> doodle coats, I think that um, we need to think about um, we should expect weirdness. Like find that a doodle coat yes. is anything until, until you have seen it. Mm -hmm. So it's like expect the unexpected. Expect an undercoat. Expect something kind of wiry, except expect something that can be really hard to figure out time frames. So expect the worst and then like the, for time and then make sure that you have time because worst case scenario, you expected the worst and the dog ended up being a lot easier than you. Know. The owners are mm -hmm. happier and you have a little bit, you know, more leeway with it. But they're just so complicated and part Aussie and he's part doodle and he's part poodle and he's part burner. And until we get your hands in that coat at a variety of ages, yeah. we really don't even yeah. know. I think that's a really good key, too, again, is is that what you just said, the getting your hands on them and having that check in process or even that call structure when you're talking to doodle owners um because yep. they don't quite understand what they themselves are dealing with and i think that's where a lot of the miscommunication comes from until they start sending mm -hmm. you pictures of creatures that they want their dog to look like that can't happen to their <laughs> pet and yeah. i would love to look like farrah fawcett or you know but it's just not gonna happen <laughs> Yep. I'm mostly German, but I'm not Heidi Klum. <laughs> there we go. Um, yes, I'm going to pop in because our chats are lagging tonight also. Ashley just pop chimed in. Uh, oh, see, there it is. That's what she's saying. I know. Yeah. I can see Ooh. it on our end. There's something going on with the stream uh tonight um so we got you ashley we can see you in there we're ju i'm just not able to see oh i'm really messing it up having fun with this tonight oh my goodness um <laughs> what's your favorite what's your favorite coat to work with okay if you could name one doodle breed breed or coat type what's your favorite that you like <laughs> oh is that a trick uh, there's too many choices you know i Go ahead, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I I kind of like the ones that you can actually, I, I kind of like it when they have a double coat. I mean, yes. yeah, it's getting packed under there, but at least it comes out and you can brush it through and it's something really satisfying about brushing out that stuff and, and then being able to put them in a cute trim and showing the own hair came mm -hmm. out when I, when I was brushing, this is shedding and this is why you need to brush at home. And we should be able to maintain this coat pretty well. I kind of like those and they come out cute. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm with, not the man with Ashley. The I like terrier the terrier one. Yeah. I like the terrier one too. I like the scruffy, the, the one, <laughs> but then the I like that everyone the says leave them fluffy. Yeah, yeah, you do like the terriers. I like the terriers. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I'll I don't. end with you, Chrissy. I like the <laughs> undercoat because I do like undercoat removal. 
Katie knows. Yeah. 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 Not so much. Dara Dara likes the knee shed. I do. <laughs> it I looks like a snow shed. globe in the room. Dara. Yes. She loves <laughs> that. Yes. That's why I always made a really great bather. <laughs> yes. I honestly think I yep. have a favorite. I think that uh, I like the behaved. I don't <laughs> want to. I, I, there's a you word like for the it, what? But behaved. <laughs> You're breaking up now, so we're only catching oh, bits no. and pieces of you. Oh. Yeah. Yes, D sheds are so satisfying. We're going to talk about that in a couple months. I, I've got that on the schedule of talking techniques and D shedding, which is one of my most favorite things ever. Um, but I am just, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just not down into doodles. Go ahead, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right? With lag, I'm just raising my hand so I don't talk over anybody. <laughs> right? Um, I. I really like the ones that I can do some creative grooming. I think that doodle coats can be really fun to trim. So the ones that like, they don't want them to look like a poodle and they kind of want what kind of looks like a big stuffed animal. I kind of get a kick out of grooming those. I like making them look like a big stuffed animal and you know, the nice column legs and kind of a nice little cute fuzzy head. And there, there is something really fun about them. And um, you just have to get mm -hmm. past the, the groomer's um, expectations and the owner's expectations not meeting up. Once you get those back in line together, I think they're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got nothing. <laughs> got nothing. <laughs> nope. I will say obviously you can tell this this is not Dara's topic. <laughs> Viewer lands going, oh God, you guys suck tonight. <laughs> I don't. It's because Chrissy I has to raise her hand to I talk. Don't wanna... <laughs> mm. I don't want to offend any doodle owners. Well, that's. <laughs> they like to offend us. I know. They like to offend us left and right every chance they get. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I, I like think that. Um... Go ahead. <laughs> Tell you. I think that a lot of our doodle owners they were they were sold this beautiful dream, um, and when we talk about behavior, that's going to come up a lot too, which I think behavior is next week, right? But they were sold this beautiful, yeah. beautiful dream, and it's really hard to spend that kind of money and find out that you didn't get the dream that you thought you had, right? So they're like, but they don't does. And we have to be compassionate when we talk to our owners about it. Like, hey, let me show you what I'm seeing, you know? And your dog happens to shed. He is part this other breed, you know? And he's adorable. This is what we need to work with. This is what we have. And these are your options. And um, I think most of our frustration comes from the customer and the owner end and our conversations with owners more so than it comes from the dogs themselves. Um, if you had all the time in the world with a dog who's well brushed out and an owner who understands that he can't look like the dog in the picture and he could look like the dogs in yeah. these pictures, like suddenly your, your workload is very different because you're like, Oh, well mm -hmm. let's, what kind of cute trims can we do on him? And I mean, they're adorable and they are really fun pets so when we when we let go of the idea of them so many groomers hate them just they make great pets they're popular for a reason um you know they're going to be here forever we can't unring that bell so <laughs> if we talk to our owners more about it and just explain to them like hey here and if you're the start taking pictures of a variety of different coat types like hey, this is a doodle similar to yours. And he has this wiriness and he has this undercoat. And let me take a closer picture. And let me just, just have these photos available so that you can tell them, hey, you're not the only one who has a doodle who's got this mix. It's exciting. It's yep. part of what makes him unique. And just sell it as it makes him unique. 
and yeah. charge more because they're unique. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're unique. <laughs> I was waiting for that from Chrissy. She's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Jennifer's popping in here in a second. So I'm just waiting for her camera to switch on. But um, Ashley says she doesn't mind the doodles. She prefers the smaller ones. And I agree. I do like the small ones. They seem to have a little bit more. They're not as... Um, they're, they don't seem to have the anxiety and the yeah. um, the hyperness that the larger ones have. So maybe that's more for next week. But groomer mm. Jen said she was taught <laughs> to hate doodles, as which many of us are, right? And uh, since she started working alone, and that's the majority of her clientele, um, she's learned to to make it enjoyable. Just out of curiosity, what do you do, groomer Jen? Um, that that has helped you overcome that or what's some of your tips or tricks or secrets that you wouldn't mind passing along okay there she is hello hey, wet hair. <laughs> i have wet hair i just got out of the shower it's been a long day <laughs> was it filled with doodles um, yes, not filled, but you know, they were there, they were in the mix. Yeah. Actually, what happened, it, you know, it would have been a normal hard day, except for the last client um, was stuck at a doctor's appointment. We close at five, mm. hard close. There's a signed contract that they have a $50 late fee if they're even 15 minutes late. She was 45 minutes late. So that's why I have wet hair. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So That's we were amazing. just, yes, we are. Thank you yes. for joining us. And we were just talking about our favorite texture coats in the doodles. What I like one? the wiry ones. Wiry, wiry. That's what Katie yeah. said also. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Chrissy like and I a... went the undercoat. Dara one. and I are on the other because... team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I get it. They're more, they are more like, we get the another fur, team. Like, you know, you're crossing fur and hair to get most of your doodles. Mm -hmm. You're taking a shedding breed that needs to shed and crossing it to a coat that won't let it shed. And whoever thought that was a good idea, I don't know. But, uh, and he, even the guy himself, of course, came out and apologized. Um, but the ones that come out more like fur are the wiry ones that have more undercoat. Yes, there's more de-shedding to do, but there's almost very little cutting you need to do. It's just right. like a, like, a doing a golden retriever to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Katie, you know, you know who my favorite doodle ever was. I do. Barley. Yep. I was gonna say barley. Yeah. Uh, barley. Yeah, bar barley was barley this was wonderful. big, huge. Mm. He was almost white. And yes. he had that undercoat and the terrier coat. So he grew to a certain length and he never had a haircut, but we trimmed him up, but it was all just brushing and de-shedding. Yep, de and yep. he had the, the schnauzery look face and oh okay. my God, he was just, and he was so laid back and he was so he was chill. so sweet. He was like, oh, hey guys, what's going on? Oh, you're going to have a beer? Mm. Yeah, let's go have a beer. Come on. He just had the best <laughs> personality. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you want me to get in the tub? I'll get in the tub. Oh, you oh, want me to I stand on the that. table? I'll stand on the table. Never moved. He would not jump off the table or get off the table until we asked him. And he stood there completely completely no hookups yeah nothing <laughs> yeah i love does. ashley Aww. ashley handy's comment in the in the chat room she says one of her doodle doodle clients is a golden retriever in the front and a doodle in the back that's funny. oh wow that's funny yeah what, like we would like that. pictures that's of that ashley <laughs> yes pictures please yeah and yep. groomer jen was giving us some tips on how um she got over her her doodle just well, I think the like. main thing, you know, if, if people understand that they, that they, there is this extra step, I, and that's just why I think it's legit to charge more for doodles, mm -hmm. the crossing of a fur type dog to a hair type dog, something that needs to shed to something that won't let it shed. That is something that is worth saying to them. There's an extra step we have to do with these guys. And that's pulling out undercoat 
before we cut them. And I usually mm -hmm. advise to do it in that order because you're not going to get a nice smooth cut once if you haven't done that undercoat removal. And some of them yeah. have really heavy undercoat, like the Bernie Doodles undercoat, and the Super yeah. Doodles are the worst. They oh, are the gosh. thickest, heaviest undercoat. Although I did a new fee poo the other day and that was huge. Wow. Uh, yeah. Ashley, I'm just going to tell you, it probably won't let you post it until after the live feed is over. So from just throw it back in there or you can send it to me and I'll, I'll share it on the screen. But yeah, those, uh, we have a lot of shepherd doodles and it's funny because the, the ones we you have shepherd doodles. Oh, I like that. Shepherd doodles. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't have any undercoats and they are, they're pretty big dogs. And I think you know who I'm talking about, Chrissy, um, Brewski, mm -hmm. Brewski, and there was an, I can't remember the other one's name, but just tight. They have more coarse, yep. tight, kinky coat, and it takes them forever to dry. Yep. They're like yeah. a, that almost poodle coat, and it's tight, and it stays really tight close to their body. Yeah. The ones that are more like poodles are the ones yeah. that mat, so just just the worst. Yeah. Yeah. If, these two don't mat though. Their ears they do, but not their bodies. But it could be because we kind of keep them fairly short and they are very regular with their grooming. I think that is the key is making sure they stay absolutely. regular with stay their on, grooming. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm even then, if we're Jen's calling them comment here. Yeah. But even then, if we're calling them shepherd doodles, yeah. then someone else is like, oh, that's the one I want. But that doesn't mean anything. From, yeah. uh, from puppy yeah. to puppy, from litter to litter, uh -huh. from right. breeder to breeder. You know what I mean? Like that, like that's just, you know, more similar because I think it really comes down to luck. Uh -huh. An awful lot just comes down to yeah. luck as to what they're yeah. going yeah. to inherit. We, I, I just want to um, make a, a And I think a lot of comment. owners don't understand the genetics part. Oh, oh my God, yeah. yes. That's a huge yeah. problem. I just want to say, I just have to because I'm spellbound. Dara, you with this new professional camera of yours and and Chrissy with your amazing microphone, <laughs> you guys look and sound amazing. Yes, oh, thank I you. agree. Yes. I'm <laughs> spellbound Yay. and I now you make me want to go out and buy an expensive camera and didn't I, the I sent you the link, didn't I, for the, the yes, camera? Yes, I know. Yeah. I've been I've been busy. I really do like it looks so good. It looks and sounds very wow. Yeah, yeah, I got to get my microphone <laughs> is actually hanging up right here, but I just went with the yeah. regular because I was flying in. But I, don't, I have a hard time explaining the genetics to the families. I do try to explain the fur and hair thing at least and, mm -hmm. um, you know, explaining why the dematting charges and stuff. But honestly, all of them, um, you know, I just wish I could pass a law that says if you're going to buy from, a, you know, a breeder, that that breeder has to give you grooming instructions that are legit. Um, and, you know, some of them have come to me with this, oh, they I, they said they only need to be brought in once a year and you never cut them until they're a full year old. And mm -hmm. I mean, all it's mm -hmm. there's so much misinformation out there and it's all they're being lied to by the breeders because they don't know that they have to groom them monthly and that they have to pay for that. And, mm -hmm. It's it's a yeah. problem. I think they're great dogs. There's yeah. nothing wrong with them as dogs, but they are. Um, uh, it's it's the whole market around them. That yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Do you oh, have? Yeah. We, we talked about the favorite coats. Get to you right in a second. Do you have a favorite um, variety that you like? Being. I mean, like which crosses? Yeah. Hmm. I like. I find I like lab. Doodles more than golden. golden. I think I like the golden doodles more than the labradoodles. Hmm. Yeah, I like kind of like the Aussie a bit doodles. Crazy in my dogs, Aussie doodles oh, yeah. are cute. Yeah, and Lightroom. I say that as a this is so horrifying. I have in my house show Australian shepherds, show miniature poodles. I have an intact male miniature poodle, and I have an unspayed show female Australian Shepherd and you know my kids are saying Aussie Doodles and I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the people I breed and show oh, with and co-own with would kill me you make a never... fortune Jennifer <laughs> I know that's what I kept saying we could make 
you know, but I could never, I could never actually allow my dogs to breed for money. I just, I can't, yeah. can't, mm -hmm. can't do that. Ooh. Ashley sent me pictures. So I'm going to go, you guys keep talking. Yeah. Uh, well, so Chrissy, you were going to say, yes, Chrissy. Yeah. I, I'm Joe, lag. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, so lag. I think that, um, there are a number of ways to describe genetics to owners. Um, and one of the ways that I find people start to understand is that um, my parents both have dark hair. And I were all, we're all blonde. And my grandfathers were blonde. Like uh -huh. some things will skip a generation. Okay. Um, blue eyes. Blue eyes mm -hmm. are going to follow along no matter, you know, um, until somebody comes along with brown eyes. And then... Uh -huh. And it's going right. to be brown. That's just the way. Um, my mom might have hoped that I would get my dad's height, but I did that side of the family. But I kind of didn't get the shortness from her side of the family either. It evened out. And so sometimes when we talk to our owners about um, the human experience, like think about your siblings uh, yeah, in what ways are you yeah. entirely different. We don't inherit things. And um, I find for a lot of owners, they're like, oh, so so you're saying he doesn't necessarily get this poor other dog's trait um, just because that that, that uh -huh. makes sense mm -hmm. to them, and that can right. be part of bridging the gap with that education. Well, your dog is right. still special and unique, and I love him, and he's great. This part from his dad. Mm -hmm. And I just want to go back and say about what Groomer Jen's comment was about the you know how she has actually done she's learning as she's doing her different combinations of coats, what products, what techniques work with them. And then she's actually making sure that every visit that they're gaining progress in the maintenance of that and learning what works and what doesn't. I think that is just such a positive, you know, yeah. a, that's a real positive way to approach her work. And then she said she likes all the combinations except the tight, tight, thick, dense curls that are like Legotos. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. That's, a lot See, of that would be my second choice and i don't know why because i really like those other two and i like doing and i enjoy doing them but i i think it's maybe because i enjoy those particular two dogs and their personality in my old age i have really noticed that when i'm working in the shop that i am like oh well there are other people i don't have to do this dog <laughs> I can pass them on to somebody else, and I'll just do the ones I like. <laughs> well, you should be able to at this stage in our lives. If, if you know, if, I don't know about you, you younger Katie and Chrissy, but you know, you, you know, Jerry, you and I should be able younger. to. Oh wait, hopefully. I'm going to throw them under the bus. They're both older than me. <laughs> yeah. What really? No, uh, I mean, I'm 65 in October. Oh yeah, and I do. I, I, you know, I, I try to go in and be of service every day, but um, there's certain things I just can't do anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I am yeah. going yeah. to try to share because um, Ashley sent me these pictures, and oh, I gotta they are this. stinking adorable. Grumma so... Jen says she likes Labradoodles the best for the last yeah. time of Nevada State. A lot of so... red apricot golden dudes. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh, that's right. Dude, it does look that like a golden show retriever. Up? Yeah. Golden yeah, retriever yep, in the front. Did. Yep. Yep. There's the golden retriever look in the front that for sure. Face. That's and where's the yeah, yeah. in the back? I know. There that says, and then we got look at this guy. Oh, cute. Aww. Super cute. And then she's got her poodly doodle. Yep. Right. So. Okay. That's really pretty. Beautiful yep. little face that she did. I love the way she did the donut mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Very so cute. Cute. Mm -hmm. So she said, um, in I mean, they're pet... popular because they are great pets. Yeah. You said exactly. it earlier. They are. Have you noticed my co host in the back? Yes. He is spotlight. Yes. That's Archimedes, <laughs> the love of my life cat, but he's getting so old. Oh, uh, no butt pictures. We want to see butt pictures next time uh of sadie all right of, of um sadie i think you're yes. right face uh, groomer jen that it is it, another way to explain the genetics uh it is to tell them it's a it's a roll of the dice yeah it's a crapshoot what 
mm-hmm. they're going to get. It doesn't matter what the parents look like even. So, uh, because doodles Sweet. are mixes of mixes of mixes of mixes. Mm. And the original doodles were a golden retriever cost to a poodle or a Labrador cost to a poodle. Um, but then you take doodle and bring it, breed it to doodle and it just continues to dilute and variate the mix. Yeah. And the more variety you put into it, the more it can just turn up to be, you know, whatever. And that's, that's, I mean, th- there's whole articles on the internet about people that are a people of color giving birth to a white child or, a, a, you know, white a family giving birth to a, a, a child of color because of genetics that are just randomly back there. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Go, go Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, um, and I think too, people forget bred with a standard poodle, which is very different than mixing with a mini poodle. Uh, and you get very yes. different traits yeah. because mini poodles and standard poodles are very, very different. So um, not just their look, yeah. but their personalities. They are entirely different. So the, the standard mm-hmm. poodle mixed with a lab is likely to have really kind of a hunting dog set of instincts, uh-huh. but then still across a litter that could be entirely different. Um, start mixing in with like the smaller, like people sometimes are like, oh, the smaller doodles, but those are often part mini poodle. Um, so, you know, uh, yes. The, You'd never really know what you're going to get. But then across litters, you might have different colors. You might have different sizes. You might, there's no consistency across the litter either. I was going to go to the colors because that is one thing. We kind of started talking a little bit about that last week. And I have heard and seen on multiples that people who are really upset, I bought this puppy because it was this color, but then it grew into this. I think they dyed it. I think they did something to make it this way so I would buy it when you know, there are our chocolates and the reds and, and some of those creams that change colors in the poodles yep. as they're aging and going through their lifestyle changes that they're not forewarned that that gene could be in that particular particular dog. And even um, golden retrievers. Yeah, my mother-in-law's golden retriever, she's almost white, the puppy, she was, you know, your typical yellow golden retriever and uh. so even gold and you mix that with a poodle that's going to clear coat and it's going to be a than it was as a baby a diluted color have you yes. all found yep. that the lighter colors have thinner hair as a general rule in the doodles i have found that some of the really light ones that they do tend to be just you know a clearer shot to the skin than the darker ones so i don't know if there's i know that in general darker coats are thicker um but in the doodles it seems to be very pronounced for me um Hmm. and you know i i had one person come in with an apricot doodle it's really just a standard pool that's kind of not got very great hair but um (laughs) um yeah that they're just uh, i just see uh, it, they brush burn easily. They, they're, you know, you have mm-hmm. to just be really super careful with a lighter colored one sometimes. Ashley said she has a I great example a of ton. that. Oh, go ahead, Katie. I said I don't do a ton that are really light colored. Um, we do have. If you didn't know it, you would say he was a lab because longer ears like a poodle, and the long tail with the kind of like swoop at the end of it and mm. they swear to me up and down that he's a labradoodle and i'm well it's whatever they've been sold yep. by the marketing of the exactly. you know, breeder That's exactly that, you know right. I, one thing i have learned boy if i didn't know it already from the last 40 years is these breeders these opportunistic breeders yes. are just they just lie they yeah. lie yeah they lie yeah. lie 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 yeah so is there something i'm going to go really quick to ashley and then we'll come to chrissy and then i'll go back to mine but ashley had mentioned that she has um a morky that was almost black and now he's gray i was just going to go on that i used to groom katie and i groomed a standard girl for a long time named brandy and she was red like like almost fire engine red and as she was aging um 
she started lightning and lightning and her mom used to come in and be like dire i want her back to the original color i don't oh. like her anymore and didn't like her to oh my god it was like crazy she she ended up and ended up almost oh. gray at the end and it was she just was very unhappy with what she ended up with and it's like how can you be that person doesn't deserve to have a dog i know i know know, know. right (laughs) go christy you're up yeah (laughs) so i think um a lot of these breeder stories we're getting are people who i have this wonderful dog and my neighbor has a wonderful dog and they love their dog and we're just going to make these puppies and sell them. I think that most of the time that it's it's this rose-colored glasses, no experience at all. And mm-hmm. you know, I've I've heard plenty of stories about how oh and his dad was a rescue. I'm like, who would breed a rescue? Like you know nothing about that dog's background. You know nothing about if yeah. he's the only litter mate of his litter mates who was born yeah. like alive. You don't know anything about them. Right. But there no health history yeah Yeah. you know no health history you don't know if his like brother has seizures or anything you know nothing and they're not doing health testing and they don't understand so they're selling the lie that i think they bought into there are definitely predatory people out there though saying oh no this is a whatever whatever he's an f1 Uh something or other Uh um and they're spending a lot of money on these dogs that they I just don't not, know I mean, what they're getting. Which is and I think they, that our yeah. frustration has to be with the breeder. Uh-huh. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what mine is. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to show this comment yeah. by comment by groomer Jen here, who I really like this, that she's she's keeping a track she's of really all tracking of this. stuff. You go, groomer Jen. Yeah. You're doing great. Um, you know, I'm going to go in and kind of play the the devil's advocate. Um and say there have got to be some people out there that are doing this legit as i really truly believe in this particular Mm -hmm. line i believe in this breed i i believe there's something here and that are maybe trying to make i mean breeds didn't come up just because so there's got to be some that are trying to track this and create this properly by doing the testings how do we find and reach out to to the ones that are doing it properly Mm -hmm. and embrace them and The the only thing i would say as a person who has bred and showed dogs for for four decades i would uh, I you can't with a doodle ask to see things like pedigrees and all that kind of stuff. But what I would insist on is there's something called a wisdom panel, which is the main mm-hmm. genetic test you can get for dogs. You should get a wisdom panel on both parents and you should get something called OFA, the Orthopedic Foundation of America. It's, a, it's yeah. the hip and elbow dysplasia mm-hmm. of both parents, mm-hmm. especially if you're looking at yep. a larger doodle. You really must, if you're getting a Shiba Doodle, Bernadoodle, or a larger Doodle, if you're ex- you're buying a Doodle that you're expecting to be more than 40 pounds when you look at the size of the parents, that they need to have OFA certified, both parents. I don't care if it's a purebred dog or if it's a mixed breed dog. You need to, um, if it's a larger dog especially, you need to get those hips and elbows um, x-rayed and certified by OFA of the parents before you breed them. And you should do a wisdom panel and look for anything that is, um, you know, a red flag in terms of, you know, sebaceous adenitis, which is um, a something that poodles have often carried um, yeah. that can cause that uh, the death of the, you know, sebaceous gland, mm-hmm. and then they, then the skin and the hair follicles just turn to like cracking dry, you know, and they they get huge pat- patches of, you know, no hair and and they have huge problems. So, I mean, I would just make, if you want to be a knowledgeable buyer and you want to buy from a breeder of a doodle and you want to look, you know, these mixed breed um, buy, um, breeders, at least insist on OFA to hips and elbows and a wisdom panel uh, on the parents and, and ask to actually physically see those, those papers. See, these are things, uh, Jennifer, we should do an article on this. Yeah, that would be, it's important. I mean, that's just something that there's, there's nothing out there. I, 
I, I know more about horses and showing and com uh -huh. competing and breeding than I do dogs. So, you know, those two things you just said, even I didn't know until yeah. you said that. And I've never had a real purebred dog. We always go with, um, yeah, rescues are rescues, great. but great. I mean, that's like the doodles are great. very interesting. So, but nobody breeding a purebred dog would, would that's showing is going to breed without doing the tests for the issues that that breed right. carries. Yeah. Whether it be the larger mm -hmm. breed dogs that they, they're looking for the dysplasia or the smaller breed dogs that have, you know, or certain like, you know, Pomeranians that have the black skin disease mm -hmm. and things like that. So you really yeah. have to look, um, but, but the doodle people should have to do this too, because yeah. there are many genetic illnesses that can be found by a wisdom panel. And it's not that expensive to do, you know, for the money that they're yeah. making. Yeah, the, they're gonna... they, Skipper key breeders, because I have an extensive Skipper key back knowledge um and and they've been testing for um it's it's a it's similar to addison's and they've mm. been testing for that for years if you get a true breeder that shows they test for that and it, my poodle was, was tested he had a wisdom pan his parents had a wisdom panel done it's not that expensive and it doesn't oh, matter very inexpensive it's like less than a yeah, hundred dollars and the breed yeah yeah mm -hmm. it is irrelevant they can test rescues mutts find the mark mm -hmm. genetic markers for a lot of stuff and mm -hmm. if there's something wrong then they can prepare for it exactly. i went to a seminar yeah i went to the uh, bedlington terrier trim and when she was talking to us about the breed, because of genetic testing, there's a liver problem in the Bedlington Terrier breed that is just about entirely eliminated now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's never been yes. to be able to like, yes. like look at these yeah. dogs before you breed them. Yeah. Tools that are yeah. available, readily available. You know, so um, that's part of what we pay uh -huh. for when we go to a breeder is that we don't want to trust the future oh, yeah. of dogs to the riffraff who just put dogs in the backyard and let nature take its course. I actually have um, three yeah. little dogs that are Tibetanese that are a cross of Havanese and Tibetan. I don't know. It's, you know, and it was, you know, it was exotic and sounded adorable. And they looked at the parents and they looked at the pictures of the puppies and they thought they were precious. These are day one clients of my business. From the days I opened my doors eight years ago, they were the first clients in the door and they are still coming every week, every Monday they get baths. And then once a month we get a haircut and they are just precious to us. Maggie, Maggie Bella and Melrose, they paid then 10 years ago, uh, they paid because I've been in business with them eight years and they were two years old when I started with them. They're not now like 10. Um, and they're uh, two litter mates and then a, a sort of a cousin. And they are all, all of them, uh, they paid 10 years ago, like $3,500 each for them. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And yeah. now they all have, um, uh, one of them has grade four hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia. One of them has the other two have a lower grade, but they all have dysplasia. And the bigger male actually just had to, he has a crooked jaw like this. Mm -hmm. And he actually had to have all of his teeth removed uh, this summer because his teeth are deteriorating because his jaw is crooked. So sad. Wow. Um, mm. And they paid mm. Boku bucks from this breeder and no OFA of hips and elbows, no guarantee, no contract guaranteeing mm -hmm. a genetic, like when I sold puppies that I bred, one of the things that was covered in the contract is any, any genetic or breeding defect. Now, if they yep. do something to the dog and, you know, let it, you know, get catch something or something because they've been careless, that's one thing. But if, you know, if it's something that's genetic, like dysplasia, like sebaceous adenitis, like a skin, you know, like um, all of the herding group dogs have these things with their eyes and neurological mm -hmm. issues. They get deteriorating mm -hmm. spines. You see this in corgis and, and old yep. English sheepdogs sometimes. And 
Um, there's German a lot Shepherds. of them that get like, yeah, they, there's a lot of your herding group dogs that have these neurological things. That's why you're never supposed to give any herding group dog the, um, what's in the, that trifecta thing or whatever that they give that does heartworm and it was anyway, the ivermectin not, that you're not yeah. supposed to use ivermectin ever yeah. on a herding group dog because of the neurological impact. A lot of this stuff, you know, um, the, the people who do the purebred dogs at least are really monitoring and really working to eliminate, but mixed breed breeders don't guarantee for anything and they charge enormous. You pay more for one of these unguaranteed, no health contract, no genetic testing, no, um, you know, hips and elbows, uh, x-rays of the parents, nothing. You're, you, you don't, and you're paying enormous. You can buy a show quality show dog from a really good parent, really good breeder that is, um, you know, doing all of that testing and signing a contract with you with guarantees in it to take the dog back if there's any problems. Um, it, you know, and I just don't understand why people don't understand that that's a way better deal going to a breeder like that. Yep. Yeah. I posted yeah. a link in the chat for everyone yep. um, to see that Chrissy had recommended. And I believe I actually read it on your Facebook page, maybe, Chrissy. It's I about it a um, while ago. The, uh, yeah, the so golden. It's it's a really great read, and I think they did a pretty good job at um, answering. It was a little lengthy, but it, it's it's worth the read. Um, Groomer Jen, I know wonky legs. <laughs> you should see my dachshund chihuahua yeah. mixes with their wonky legs. Yeah. <laughs> we have our little dachshund uh, chihuahua Ellie. She's got we call her Frodo. <laughs> she looks like she's got hobbit feet. <laughs> You know, you're so right, Grimmer Jen, though. These problems are not unique to doodles. And, um, you yeah. know, yeah. you can get a lot of really good, healthy dogs. As long as they do this testing, it doesn't matter what the breed is, mixed breed or purebred, as mm -hmm. long as they're being conscientious about the health of the parents before they're breeding them. Yeah. Yep. And, and there was a big flood of but them I think also COVID. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. I think also a, a part of what you find with a good breeder is a good breeder is going to listen and decide if this is a good dog for you, you know, and I think that that's yeah. part of what's missing is that a breeder is going to say, yeah. you know yeah. what, I don't think your house and your, and your lifestyle is going to be right for this dog. You know, as somebody who owns border Collie, or your budget, there, for there are just some grooming? family groups that right. are not going to be a great. Yep. Yep. You know, so, when you have somebody who's like, oh, the perfect pet and they're perfect in every way. And we, you know, you don't even need to do training with them because you're toy. Groomers might not it's know this, toy. but train issues with gold, with the doodles too. Cause owners are like, oh, we didn't do any training. The breedies breeds and he's great with people. And these dogs just don't need that. That's for rescues and for bad dogs, you know? So the, mm. the, the misinformation that people yeah. are getting is, um, is sad. Mm -hmm. their yep. breeder either you know and that's why when i do come in somebody dogs. does yeah and, and that's why um every new puppy and i just t did an intake on the phone today with a new sheep -a doodle puppy um every every uh, first puppy coming in i always do this 15 minute consult with them about the lifetime care of this dog in terms of the coat um, I explain the genetics of, of the coat. We find out as much as I can from them, from their breeders. But then I really talk to them about, here's what to expect during puberty. Here's what to expect by this age. This is what happens when they get older and the toenails start growing faster and you have to start yeah. clipping the toenails more often. I mean, everything. I just do this like lifetime um, care talk and they're all just blown away. Nobody has told them these things. Nobody has told them that they're supposed to be groomed monthly. You know, that's, that's just, that's just criminal that you're going to try to sell somebody something and then not tell them that they need to budget at least $1,200 a year for the grooming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And it boil, it boils down to the, the irresponsible breeders are, they want the money. Yeah. They're in it for the I, it, money. It's again. It, it's I don't want to keep being the bashers of these these breeders because they're 
some of them are doing they're it right. doing it for yeah. they're they're filling a need too i mean if people are continuously buying them if people are there they're like you said there's there's some but there's something to be said uh -huh. they are it's it's I know some of them that are wonderful and very, very careful. And I'm especially appreciative of my hair, the lady who cuts my hair. She just went through this process of really interviewing breeders and she found some that are very conscientious and have like, they wouldn't sell her the dog until the puppy, until they visited her home and saw her fenced yard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are very, very good conscientious people out there. Yeah. And also to make sure that she knew that you know that there was this haircut obligation luckily she cuts human hair so she knows all about that but um it was it, there are there are some wonderful ones out there um i just wish that there was more grooming education more education mm -hmm. about that this is a haircut dog and you really have to do this pretty much on a monthly schedule and i yeah. think that that's the part that usually surprises most people you know um a, a lady today with a golden retriever puppy a brand new golden retriever puppy and she you know when i told her yeah the, you know we'll see you once a month and it'll be 90 dollars a visit and for and you know i explained to what it covers once it's an adult and she she says wow nobody told me that that was part of the deal yeah yeah no that and is, i think uh... a lot of um a lot of these owners if they knew ahead of needed that this is a really thorough brush out every week mm -hmm. you know because like brush my dog what like this is part of owning this breed you need to brush them out thorough you know and they're thinking but that's poodles mm -hmm. but your dog is part yeah. poodle yeah. you know mm -hmm. like that right, right. But the poodle part yay yep. every week yep you, you got the poodle part yay <laughs> <laughs> good for you now let's <laughs> now let's get the right brushes <laughs> So can, um, it, it, as we are getting somewhat close to the end of the show, can um, can I change the subject for a minute? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we have a lot of educational opportunities coming up and I just thought maybe each of us could maybe share, you know, um, just some educational things that are coming up. I'm going to be in Houston this weekend at the um, Groom Texas. It's the first time I've ever gone to the Groom Texas show, which is a weird it, it's a, a good for Barkley. it's a it's a it's an unusual thing it's not a normal Barkley show you know uh it's in association with this world astrodome houston astrodome world cluster dog show cluster so it's actually a dog show it's a dog show event and then over in these little oh, side meeting rooms there's a smaller mini um, grooming conference, a grooming, you know, educational piece, which is so cool. I'm so excited about this. Uh, I have, um, I never have gotten to do that before. And then the All American in Chicago, which I hope everybody's coming up to in the first weekend in August. And yeah. there's, there's just a lot of great. Um, yesterday I did World Groom, which is the internet-based thing. They just said World Groom 10. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, Dara, you've got a new faculty member for our we beloved school do we do i was gonna go there next if that's all right yes, yes. Go. so uh and we have a new member and team member to our pet pro educators so dave campanella has agreed and has come on and will Yay. be teaching courses and um has some some different leveled courses that he's going to be doing and he's agreed to come on the pet pros a couple times a, a, a month here. So we're looking forward to that once he is back healthy and back to work. So mm -hmm. waiting for that. Um, we put out, I, I was going through everything. I mean, um, we have put in, I just, I just submitted in a whole bunch of new classes for um, a lot of our instructors and um, Michelle is getting ready in August to start some live classes. So her uh, level 100 class is starting in a live and following that will be the two and 300. Um, we will be opening up another one because the live class filled up very quickly. So nice. we're going to need another Good. one. 
and uh, Chrissy's class. Oh goodness, Chrissy, you had quite the the review that came <laughs> out. So that you're, is you super good teacher. All oh, of us. I, I, oh I love my the gosh. team that you. I just have to compliment you, Dara. You have a, 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 assembled this team of just amazing teachers, you know, who <laughs> communicate so well. I, it has been, I tell you, like, you guys have just, uh, this last year, we have, we have grown, we have overcome a lot of hurdles and um, have started, I, I don't want to say we've started to, to level out, but the additions have just, just, it, it's like, all of a sudden, words getting it's out. Um, uh -huh. we've got one hell of a freaking team. <laughs> yeah, do. it is amazing. I have to comment before you speak, Chrissy, yeah. um, about your amazing thing. Um, Ashley says that she's jealous that <laughs> Ashley did the whole the whole master esthetician with um, the great Michelle Knowles. You did Online. it all with those recorded classes. Oh. You didn't get didn't get that interactive and. Um, you know, maybe you should be allowed to, you know, do some auditing for free of the new one. <laughs> Just for the interaction. Be careful. Ashley's going to be teaching next. <laughs> Ashley should be teaching next. Ashley, yeah. you might, if you got some, come talk to me. We can talk here, girl. <laughs> I'm sure Michelle would love that, you know. What do we say? We want these, everyone, that is growing and developing mm -hmm. what they have learned from us to take it to the next level. So that's, okay. that's what we do. We build on it. We grow it. We took it somewhere. Now it's on to, to those that have taken it from us to, to develop it to the next level. We've got to keep going to the next level. Cause if not, why continue? What's the point? Right? Right. If you're not growing, yep. you're dying. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, go, go ahead. Chrissy. Yeah. Go Chrissy. And I think, um, I think it, the word is school is not just for beginners that we're getting a lot of really qualified oh, yeah. groomers yeah. looking to offer new services. I am truly humbled by the kind of mm -hmm. people entering my class and by the people that I would talk to every day. Um, I fangirl over all of you. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that professionals are doing to become even more. And um, I mean, yeah. I'm taking classes. Mm -hmm. We're all taking classes. And because for such uh -huh. a long time, Me school Me was too. for beginners and or or you can't learn it online. But if you're already a professional groomer, there is so much you can learn online and there's so much more enhancing yeah. you can do. Yeah. Yeah, and well. I'm, I'm a big one. I, you know, it's like, oh gosh, I've taken that class. I've taken that class before. Oh, I don't want you to take that one again, but you don't know if it's changed. Cause yeah, maybe and sometimes... it's changed. Maybe somebody has grown that class that they themselves have been teaching. So if you really enjoyed it, take it again. <laughs> I'm obsessed yep. with learning too, and... Ashley. That's awesome. Ah, uh, Groomer Jen, you are, you are awesome too. That's, yes. You guys are great. Um, but what now tell me what, yeah. what you, you said got some rave reviews on Chrissy's classes. Was that what you were gonna tell us about? Yeah. Oh yeah, I got a Do great review for a, a, a great testimonial from my class. Like she's blushing. I don't know, can we cut and paste that in here? We can just <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, I can. <laughs> um hold but, on, I'll go yeah. get it. I'll, I'll go find it. Yeah. But it was a really or nice review. Do you want review. me to read so, it? People are having fun. It it oh, I think I think you'd have to read it in Susie's voice. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, Susie Scott gave me a really nice review. Well, yes, she's a master. So, so it was. But, for you know, I think that we're all a, you know. Sorry. A lag. Go ahead, Dara. Yeah, I was going to read it. So for anyone who's interested in learning more about dog behavior on the grooming table, the Master Groomer Behavior Specialist course taught by Chrissy Newmeyer Smith is a must do. It is an in-depth and comprehensive training and handling course for the grooming environment. Crispy, sorry, Chrissy is an expert in the field and she has a lovely, enjoyable teaching style. I agree. 
You will learn handling for the pets <laughs> and for people, along with a lot of training, building blocks to add to your grooming services. This is not your weekend seminar class. It provides skills that you will use every single day in your salon, mobile or house call business. I recommend it for anyone who has any interest in behavior and especially for those who wish to specialize in this area. If you complete the course, you will be a master groomer behavior specialist. I cannot re recommend it enough. Susie Scott, the groomer wow. from wow. Groom Pod. Yeah, Groom that's Pod. wow. Awesome. But true. But true. Yeah. So nice. Yep. So, oh, thanks. <laughs> so, what's so, and then of course, we're all going to be together, yeah, in Dallas. Katie, yes. are you coming to Dallas? I am not. I have uh, uh, other previous obligations that weekend. So. Uh, well, um, so oh, oh, there's the. I was, yeah, I the just quote. posted you, you it. Put the quote in the chat room. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So yes. Um, so what's what's up next week, Miss Dara? Next week we are going to be doing. Uh, Chrissy's expertise in behavior. Behavior angle. Of the doodle. I'm. Yep, behavior angle. So I am going to be able to allow you ladies to take the lead on that um, because I know we have between you and Michelle and Jennifer um, and uh, Mindy, you guys and Katie. I mean, this is like, I just want to step back and let you ladies rock. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, you're almost disappeared in your I, background. I know. It's really dark. Is the sun setting there, Katie? <laughs> My husband is in watching television and it was driving me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, but so that's okay. next week. And then the following month. So we're going to be getting into um, more, a little bit more business. Maybe um, there is one week that I have to miss because we'll, we'll be in Saratoga for our normal summer in Saratoga week. So oh, I, the, oh, the, the week of August, I won't be nice. able to be there. Uh, well, are but, we having the show? Are we are we having um, August Monday nights as normal? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Do you? Yeah. yeah. We can talk about that though. If there's um, well, I, anything. there's some travel in there, but you know the All American is over. I can do the Monday night the eighth because the All American is over on the seventh. So yeah, mm. that would be good. So, so but yeah, that, that is it. So that's what we're doing next week. And um, be watching this week. Our new website is going to be launching. Woo! It is wholepetnh.com. Whole yes, yes. Getting a whole new look, uh, rebranded and streamlined. So you will be able to go on and click and enroll and everything. Um, and some of, you know, there are so many different courses that are not just, it's just, I, I can't even tell you how many great courses we have. <laughs> I am so proud of our courses. I can't even begin to say. Yeah, so, okay. but keep an eye out because I know Chrissy's laughing at me. Um, and <laughs> it, ah, now you got me all filtered. What else is going on? There's so much going on. We've got more classes starting. We've got new classes starting. We've got uh, Chrissy. We're going to start your next. So, do you think you round. can get Dave Dave Campanella now that he's joined our faculty? Do you think that he will come on the uh, the groomers cut? Oh yeah, he already agreed Yay. to be in a groomers cut um, okay. educate uh, well the pet pro educator, mm -hmm. and um, he is going to try and do a, a month once you know so that we can all rotate in and out. Good. So mm -hmm. he was really excited. He's like, oh, I can't wait. So that's great. Well, I'm going to go blow dry my hair now. Yes. <laughs> that's great. After, after leaving my shop, um, waiting 45 <laughs> minutes for my client to show up. So. Yes. Well, you guys have a great week. We will see you yes. next week. Um, I will set up the behavior and try and disappear for you so that you ladies. So if you can be on. Whoever wants to, Chrissy, for that. you better run the show. You know this better than anybody. So, yeah, so Chrissy, wonderful. Michelle, yeah. Katie. I mean, we've got. I got plans. Oh, oh, Katie, that's right. You do all yeah. that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. please. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be a great yeah. show. So I'm going to zip it in the background and. 
Sit there and look at that. It's fabulous with your incredible camera. Oh, I love it. I know. Right? Yeah, you look like it looks like a, you, you look like a movie star. Good. You know, right now, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel like one. <laughs> you look like one. Yeah. Yay! That's awesome. Yeah. And Chris, you sound like you could be in radio or something. It's amazing. It sounds great. Well, thanks it's everybody. Like, I hope you have a great sound, right? week. Yeah, it's, it's podcast great sounds. Week. Hope yep. to see some of you out there in at Groom Texas or at the All American. Um, what else is coming up? Uh, Kansas City, end of August. Oh, that's doing a right. One day, Barb Hoover is doing this little one. I love, I love it when the groomers do these local shows. When they don't mm -hmm. have a big trade show coming in from somebody else doing it from out of town, when they just put on in their, you know, I mean, Kansas City is a good sized city and there's a lot of groomers there and bless Barb Hoover and her wonderful team. They are doing a little one day show and, um, you know, I'm, it's, mm. I'm, I'm going to get in my car and drive and go there because I just want to support that. There's no, you know, there's yep. no money in it. It's just, it's just I, love I love supporting the education. Barb Hoover. Oh my God, she's, mm. what a gift, what a gift to the industry. So that's kind of, that's like the third Sunday in August, like August 21st, maybe. So, um, and you know, and then, gosh, then we, then we have September when, um, the Dallas show. Is Dallas the shows the end. Yeah. The Pet Pro the classic Apple, is the Pet Pro classic. end of September, end of September, early October. Hershey. Groom Expo yeah. Hershey Groom is Expo yep. Hershey in this middle. year again. Yay, and me too. Nice. We'll see you there. Dara, are you going to Hershey? Hey. Katie, are you going to Hershey? I am not. Uh, I, I am. It's so I'm close. Having, Dara, are you coming um, sorry. to Hershey? I can't. I got, I'm saving my pennies. I'm taking way too many people to Dallas okay. with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Chrissy, you and me. <laughs> Chrissy's now, face. We, you and like, me eat, eating chocolate together in Hershey. <laughs> Okay. Yep. We'll be doing tequila. Chocolate shots martinis. Here we come. Texas. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate. Everything. Oh, okay. I'll pass yep. I'm on it. Chocolate what? shampoo in the hotel shower. They do. It's wonderful. <laughs> they do. Chocolate body yes. lotion. It's like, no, oh my God. Great. So wow. Okay. All right. We'll they see everyone next bar week. When you walk in. I love it. <laughs> Have a great night, everyone. <laughs> Happy grooming. Bye. Night, everybody. Bye, Katie. Bye, Dara. Bye, Bye. Chrissy. Bye, everybody. <laughs>